Okay, welcome back to the Minish Cap, and right away we're gonna go down this staircase, which we opened up by fusing kinstones with the mayor, and look at that! Another big wallet! I did not know this was here, but apparently, yes, there is another wallet upgrade in this game, and that should be the last one. So yeah, we had three <laughs> wallet upgrades just right in a row. Now right here, after you make that stump up here by ramming into the tree, you can go over here, it's Minish Link, and then you just go across this. Might as well just dash, too. There's nothing really in your way. A few little dragonflies, but there you go. A piece of heart. And I believe that... Yeah, that just increased our count to... What is that? Is that... I wonder... That's nine hearts. Okay. So we're doing pretty good. And we're going to get a lot of heart pieces in this episode. I'm going to tell you that right now. Here I'm going towards this hole that I mentioned in the previous episode before I did the Fortress of Winds. And, uh, all this is is a kinstone piece, so it's, you know, it's not too big of a deal, but might as well come pick it up. And, um, currently we are in the middle of the book collecting side quest, in case you are just tuning in. And I have the first two books turned into the library, and now I'm going to make my way to the third one, which is located on the southern part of, um, Lake Hylia, and you actually have to go in in through the Minish Woods, so what we want to do is just go down south here and take just a little bit of a detour through the Minish Woods. And this is the area where you went and met Syrup the Witch, where you got the uh, the Wake Up Mushroom for the Shoemaker. And right there, that little wall we just dug into, that is what you use the moment for to access new areas of the overworld. Like I've said before, new items that you collect will allow you to, ex to access a lot more of the overworld, and the moments will actually ac allow us to access those doors that you guys who haven't played this game have probably been wondering about. And yeah, those places are all over the overworld, those doors you dig in, and if you want to get 100% in this game, I would suggest doing that. Here's the mayor's house, you can see the book on top of the chimney. Or the fireplace, I guess, and we have to shrink down in order to get that. All we have to do is just push the uh, chest out of the way, the drawers, or whatever the hell those things are. So yeah, that's another thing you you know, like you, that you have to need the power braces for. And yeah, I remember like coming over to this house and seeing that book there, I'm just like wondering what the hell to do because I didn't have the power braces. I didn't know you had to get the power braces in order to get this. And now it's like my last playthrough of the game. My most recent one before this let's play. And yeah, like once I got the power braces, this side quest was a piece of cake. But it's just like, oh, what do I do? So yeah, again, this is can be pretty difficult to figure out what to do here. So yeah, if there's one point in the game where you're probably going to end up using a walkthrough, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if this was it. But anyway, let's come back here as normal size Link. And get our last book. So now we just have to go back to the library and turn it in. Yes, yeah, so this is the one point outside of Castletown will, where you'll be taking part in the book side quest. Everything else concerning the book side quest takes place in the Castletown. That's the only thing that... That's the only t instance where we actually have to go someplace else in the overworld to uh, do something about the book side quest. Anyway, let's talk to the librarian. And he'll be glad to see us return the third and final book of this side quest. Thankfully, I got this one over with. I, you know, I would like to fit it into one video, but oh well. Um, after this, and then, yeah, this, <laughs> this crazy old man. I forgot his name. Um, but whatever his name is, yeah, he <laughs> runs in and just goes all crazy. He's funny. He's one of my favorite characters in this game. <laughs> so yeah, now the books are back on the shelf. We can shrink down and go back in. So after the side quest, the rest of this video is mainly just going to be a big mess of item collecting. Mostly heart pieces. Like I said earlier, we're going to get a lot of heart pieces in this episode. And we, yeah, we really do make a lot of leeway. So right here, this blue book is new. It's one of the books we just turned in, and then now we have a path that we can climb up. 
Uh, you can't come in here. I, I don't think you can, I, you can come in here until you until you uh, have all three books turned in. But I mean, either way, there's no point to come in here until you have all three books. And here is the elder library or library or whatever you want to call him. I'm just gonna call him library. It sounds more of a Jatari. Is that the name of the elder in uh, Minish Woods? Because I noticed that every dungeon except for the uh, Fortress of Winds has a, like an elder type of character you meet before. You have the the one in the Minish Village. You have Malari in on top of Mount Crono, and then you have this one right here in the bookcases. And he's gonna drop us down the trapdoor. Now, you may be wondering, what the hell was this all about? All this book collecting? And what does it, ha what does it have to do to getting to the next dungeon? Well, we're finally going to find out what this has all been about. So, yeah. At first, it's just like, uh, it's kind of un it's kind of unclear. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, to what exactly we're trying to do. But, we're about to find out. We're in another one of these types of areas. Looks kind of similar to the same place we went to to get the uh, power braces, but it's a little bit different. We finally get one of these mushrooms that we haven't seen in a while, not since the Mount Chrono, we haven't used those. So yeah, you get over here and go up through here. And right here we have these enemies who can easily go down with use of the boomerang, stunning them. Uh, those claws, those blue claws are kinda like shields and they shoot them out like boomerangs and I take them out a little bit too quickly to really explain them but here is the item that we've been looking for this whole time the flippers and not quite the Zora's flippers like I learned in the past but they're the same thing and finally we can swim thank the lord because now that we can swim we can access so many more areas in the overworld it's not even funny and it, the flippers work the same way they do in the length of pass. You can tap A to move a little bit faster. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you can also dive by hitting the B button. I don't really show it off here, but yeah, you can dive down for a short time and maybe collect some hidden items underwater. And I'm just kind of showing you where each path leads. That last pa path led to a frozen treasure chest that we can't touch yet. You just gotta go south here. And you will be exiting through this door. And this will lead out here, right ne right next to the library. And you can you can also swim as a Minish Link, too. And that also includes those uh, shallow, light blue water segments that he couldn't swim in before. So now we're pretty much just gonna do heart piece collecting and other various item collecting for the rest of this episode. So, we're going to start off in the Minish Woods, actually. And the heart pieces I'm going for right now, I originally thought that you, you had to have the flippers to get these, but you actually don't. You don't need the flippers at all to, to, get, these, to get these heart pieces. You actually, and that's the elder that I was talking about earlier in the Minish Woods. Um, I could have gotten these heart pieces at the very beginning of the game when I first visited the, Mil the Minish Village to do the Deepwood Shrine. This heart piece, you just go over to this path and you just grab it right over here. I thought that you had to actually swim across to that uh, platform. You can see on the right side of the screen there, there's a platform that you can swim to. I originally thought when I came over here that the heart piece was over there. I just assumed that. And on the other side of that, it's just a minish that says nothing important. You can probably fuse with them. I couldn't fuse with them when I went over there. But this other heart piece, right by the entrance of the Deepwood Shrine, which is dungeon number one, in case you forgot. Um, this is another one that I thought you had to get the... You needed the flippers for, because I thought you had to swim across this and then get to a shrinking stump. Which is kind of true, but... You know, you can easily just walk across... <laughs> you can easily just walk across this with normal Link. I can't really explain what my thought process was behind why I thought you needed the flippers to get here, but I don't know. I feel stupid for not getting these. I could have gotten them really early on in the game. Nothing in that pool, by the way. So yeah, oh well. Two more heart pieces collected, and 
We're here in South Hyrule Field, which is around where your house is, and you have this um, sparkling tree we can charge into with our Pegasus boots and make a stump up here that we can shrink onto. And we can go into this Minish house, and um, all we really do is just fuse with him, I believe. And this is actually a pretty important fusion. This will make uh, this that syrup the witch that we've visited to get the mu the wake up mushroom. And now you can see she only has a blue potion next to her. Well, that kinstone fusion now allows her to sell red potions, which are potions that strictly heal your hearts. Blue potions. Shoot! Well, you don't have magic in this game, don't you? That's right. See, I'm so used to other Zelda games where you have a magic meter. You don't have a magic meter in this game. I've never even mentioned that. Because most Zelda games have a magic meter. This one, you don't. But anyway, yeah, you can get red potions from Syrup now. I'll explain. I, I honestly don't know the difference be between the potions. I'll have to look into that later. But, uh... Yeah. I'll, I'll show this off later. Anyway, we're back in the Mish Woods after just picking up a heart piece. And we have these three doors I briefly show there, and we can shrink down. This is something you do need the flippers for, because you can't get across that shallow water without the flippers. It's a short time, but you know, you just have to quickly swim across there. And then we have three separate doors we can go to. It's Minish Link. Pick any one, doesn't matter. You'll get mostly kinstones from these. And the middle ones, you know, obviously it's a quick pickup, just walk right in. Now here we have kind of an ice area, and we all know what ice areas are like in video games. They are annoying, and they are annoying in this game, too. You're slip sliding all over the place, you have to be pretty careful with your traction. Uh, typically, if you find yourself sliding, just like click your D-pad or control stick in the opposite direction and you're moving, and then you'll typically stop dead in your tracks. That's how I usually go about doing this. You can apparently also swing your sword to stop yourself. That's what I've heard from elsewhere. And yeah, you get a heart piece through this trial. Which makes sense, this is the most difficult of the three rooms. In fact, the other two aren't really aren't really a challenge. This one, this is the far right one. You just have a few of these enemies that you could fight if you want to. You also have some cracks in the floor. Whenever you see cracks in the floor like that, then if you, if you stand over them for too long, for like about a second, then you'll fall through. Like, you can see there's a hole right there. So yeah, you get a, kin a blue kinstone piece from that. And we're gonna move on. And this is where you ent enter the Minish Woods early at the very beginning of the game. And this isn't that much to show, but we made a kinstone fusion to make this appear, this hole in this tree. And this uh, just leads to a Deku Shrub. I found out later that you can buy a kinstone piece from him for 200 rupees. I don't know what kind of kinstone piece. I just, you know, I talked to him in a different recording session and found out that you need to pay him 200 rupees to get a kinstone piece. So, that's kind of an example of kinstone pieces leading to more kinstone pieces. I don't know if I'm going to go back for that one because it's 200 rupees. And is, is, is it really worth it? I don't know. We'll find out later. One more thing to do in this episode and then I'll finally end it off. We need to get this well, we don't have to, but, you know, I'm going for all the items and tiger trolls and stuff like this. So, we're going for another sword skill, the dash attack. Now that we have the Pegasus boots, we can do this. Um, if you remember in Link to the Past, uh, when you did your dash attack with the Pegasus boots, you can actually stick your sword out and use your sword when you're dashing. And kind of act as a plow. Well, when you first get the Pegasus boots in this game, then... You, know, you can't exactly do that. Well, now with this sword skill, we will now be able to do that. So now we can kind of uh, truck our way through grass and bushes and stuff like that. And it's also pretty good for killing weak enemies and just kind of plowing through things. So, nice to get that. And I definitely need to end this episode off here. Sorry about kind of the erratic editing of the last two episodes. We will go back to normal in the next episode with live commentary and normal gameplay next time on the Minish Cap.